we've got another guy from the print division, Mr. Frank Nall. Frank? Uh, I was the editor of CPM Mongo for about, what was it, from 2001 until 2003. And now, I, now I'm the head of uh, Media Blasters Publishing Division. Yes, and at the end of the line there, Mr. Justin Zemeckis. Uh, I was at CPM from 2000 through 2003, uh, editing horrible hentai trailers and uh, <laughs> uh, also defending our sloppy ass product on various internet forums. <laughs> yeah, so, and we all worked for that guy. That's John O'Donnell right there. J.O.B., as, as he was known. Neil before John. Um, John O'Donnell was definitely the most interesting person I've ever worked for, but also maybe the greatest boss I ever had. Um, now, we all get, by the way. No, he's not. And we'll get to what he's been up to uh, at some point. But um, uh, when I first started in this business, now Seven Part Media had been around for a while, for almost 10 years. Um, and anime was still a little more of a niche market thing, uh, all straight to video. You know, there was starting to become a crossover with the success of, of things like Pokemon, which was just starting to break. Yeah. Um, and, and CPM had a connection to Pokemon. CPM had a connection to Pokemon, that's right. CPM. Here's a, you're getting a lot of weird little trivia. CPM uh, couldn't license to that show yeah. and didn't. And I, I, I'm going to tell you this. And, and I'm not, it's not a slight against Seth Park Media. They just had a different business model than four kids. But the anime industry would be so different had they done that. Because they weren't about the television and the mass marketing and the toys, which is what 4Kids does. I worked for 4Kids for years, also directing shows for them. I'm still an actor in their shows. Um, so Pokemon would have ended up as this little strange DVD thing would have been sitting on the shelf next to Slayers and all that. Um, and maybe this thing that we're all at now wouldn't even be happening. Um, but I gotta tell you, and I'm not trying to bash that because I have to say, this man, he's an interesting dude. He was a Harvard MBA guy, okay? This guy was brilliant. Uh, I don't know if you've ever met anybody who could really speed read, but John could do that, and it was unsettling because he, he would, you know, you would give him like a like a twelve page document, some big thing, and he would sit there and just sort of flip through and look through and look through, and every typo and spelling mistake you made, he would find. He would find, and he would internalize the whole thing. I mean, literally, the guy would just page, page, spell that wrong, page. I don't like that page, you know, and he was reading the whole thing. Uh, it was intimidating. Uh, stand up. So, you know, when John talked to you, like he'd come down the hall and he'd be like, so, make that And he would like, he was a close talker. And the boots, the boots are the other thing. He always wore these cowboy boots. And I also wear boots all the time with like a big heavy heel, which was kind of fun because when I was coming down the hall, everybody thought it was John, so like people would dive into their cubicles and like, you know. Um, but my first interaction with him, and, and maybe you guys, if you have uh, sort of similar silly stories as well, you can tell them. But like when I got hired, uh, I, I, my background before this was rock and roll. Like, uh, you know, I was playing music and doing well with that. And then like, you know, we couldn't get along with each other anymore. Band broke up. I needed to get a job. Uh, I got a little background in production through doing that you know, recording and whatnot. So I see this thing in the, in the newspaper for a DVD producer, CPM. I don't know what the hell that was. But I know what DVD is. But at the time, DVD was still pretty damn new. So I went in and interviewed, and uh, we have a picture of Stephanie in there also, uh, with the vice president of production, her name was Stephanie Shalowski. And pretty much, and the thing was, this was kind of an entry level job. Um, and I, but I was, at the time, I believe 26. So I really had to, you know, it was interesting. She was expecting more kind of college graduate people, but where I was in my life, it's like I needed to kind of make a change in what I was doing and try and get on something that would hopefully be like a career path. And uh, let me put Stephanie up there. So that there, that's Stephanie Shalowski. She's uh, the one in white, by the way. Um, and you're going to notice a lot of these pictures have booze in them. <laughs> it's just another kind of integral part of the job. But, uh, 
And that, that smiley dude on the right, that's Ross Lefko. You're also going to see a lot of pictures of him. That Admiral Ross Lefko? That Admiral Ross Emoto, which we do have a photo of that, which we'll bring up later. Uh, but he was kind of like the unofficial mascot, I think, of Central Park Media. But Stephanie, Stephanie was tough and organized and focused and scary when she needed to be. Uh, all the time. Okay, all the time. <laughs> Because there was also a thing, depending on how much uh, she liked you, because me and uh, another DVD producer, Michael Palin, not the guy from, uh, from, from Monty Python, but if you have a picture of Mike, put him up there. Um, it's probably got something else in the Yeah, we, we've got those, so if you can find those. But we were, were hired together, and the thing was, what Stephanie told us is we always reminded her of the guy she hung out with in college, which I have to say gave us kind of a free pass to do whatever. Just as long as it, she found it funny. But like I said, when I was getting hired, I was like 26, and she's like, well, if this is more of a lateral move for you, you know, are you okay with that? Can you deal with that? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. And I, I remember selling myself on this, I, you know, because I'm, I needed a job, okay? And I couldn't screw around, I needed a job. So I went in there and I said, I am the smartest person that you can possibly hire for this. I was like, you cannot get anyone who will be smarter than me. <laughs> Not even this guy, Michael Palin, who, we, you know, we're coming up on our 10th anniversary together, March 27, 2000, that's our anniversary, me and Mike hired on the same day. And Mike was more or less right out of college at the time, and he liked to stick things up his nose. Um, where's the cheese? Oh my God. Hang on. So anyway... Um, so I kind of sold myself with that, and she's kind of, uh, but she's sort of looking at me like, okay, you hot shot, you want to, and I'm like, listen, you know, and I, and it's always like, like, listen, I have experience, I'm more of an adult, you know, and I also talked about all the creative things I had done, how I could bring that into the position of DVD producer, and it was interesting what she kind of came back with was, well, this isn't exactly like a creative kind of position. Which is, I think, how that had been looked at in the past, that it was more technical. But this is uh, art, to some degree, that we're working on. You know, we're working on anime, these programs, and I'm like, well, I think it can be more like that, because DVD, what makes DVD so great? Uh, one of the things are the extras, all the bonus things that you can have that you don't get on videotapes, and a lot of that is sort of more creative things that, you know, people have to come up with and create and add and I really thought that adding that to the process could be something. And she was like, well, okay, that's not exactly the job. But so then I went in to go meet with John when I was, you know, in the, like my callback, you know, when I had to go in and uh, sit down with him. And I get into his office, you know, and he's like, all right, sit down, you know. And he's, and he's got that freaking, you know, uh, is there a problem officer kind of windshield glasses, you know, that you see here, the reflection of yourself. He took all of his style, I think, from like Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, you know, slick back hair, the same kind of shirts. Uh, I mean, he was together, this dude, okay, and, and kind of intimidating, sort of rough, I'm going to talk kind of fast and everything. And he had, uh, you know, so he sits me down and he's like, so, you're smart, so I can't do better than you. And I was just like, no, you can't. He's like, What does that mean? He shows me this picture on the wall. The eagles. And there's a picture of these eagles sitting there. You know, and uh, and, and there's big majestic eagles, but like, <laughs> with their talons out, like coming down. And I'm like, you know, it's like, well, that represents, you know, strength and honor and these things. He said, yeah, what else does that mean? He said, fuck with me and I'll kill you. And he said, right. <laughs> So he's like, all right, smart guy, whatever, and, and he hired me. And that's the thing, is that, yeah. And, and, and the fact is that I, you know, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and stood up to him because he's like, oh, maybe this guy's going to be this egotistical hotshot, which I am. Uh, but the thing is, is I back it up with knowing what the hell I'm doing. And, and, and kind of, you know, most of the time, right? Come on. Uh, so, uh, but that was really the thing. And he was very confrontational. Um, if... You know, if you were getting uh, bitched out for something, because, you know, he would take everyone to task now and again. And the thing was, if you went in there and you were like,